session to attend because there are generally after the keynote, three sessions to choose from. And when we had a physical location, you got to go to one and missed out on the other two. Because this conference is being recorded, you don't have to miss out on any of them. You can come back and view those that you still want to catch at a later time. Um, as Eric mentioned, um, given the large number of attendees, all participants will be muted when you come in. Um, use that Zoom chat function, which is at the bottom. And I also want to call your attention to the reaction button. Um, if you hit reactions, there is a, uh, a two choices in that where you can applaud, you can give a thumbs up, and that's just a way of communicating as well with the speaker. Questions that you do chat, um, put in the chat, um, I will be monitoring and at different times throughout Ian's presentation um, um, for the keynote, we will be sharing them um, with you. Um, we ask that you take a few minutes to appreciate our sponsors and our partners. They will be listed on the last slide of each presentation. This conference would not happen without their support. When this conference is over, you're going to receive an, e uh, an email with um, an evaluation and an opportunity to provide some feedback for us. The planning committee would appreciate your response because your input helps to make the event better for future years. We hope that you enjoy the conference. So with having said that, it's now my great honor to be introducing our keynote for this morning. Ian Carl is the Experiential Program Coordinator at Northwest Passage, a residential mental health treatment center for youth. It's located in Webster, Wisconsin. Ian comes from a background of wilderness expeditions, environmental and outdoor education, and adventure guiding. Ian was born and raised in Northern Wisconsin and treasures its lakes and rivers. In his role at Northwest Passage, he leads the In a New Light Under the Surface program. It is a therapeutic, underwater photography program that combines science and art education with exploration and personal discovery. Under the Surface allows residents at Northwest Passage's intensive mental health treatment program to find the healing benefits of immersing themselves in Northwest Wisconsin lakes and rivers and uncover their strengths as artists and explorers. Ian's presentation will share student photographs and reflections, background on the program's origins and objectives, and give insight to yet another level of value found in our Northwest Wisconsin water. So at this time, I'm gonna turn it over to you, Ian, and welcome. Thank you, Linda, for that introduction. Thanks to the, everyone involved in pulling this together, um, this unique, <laughs> unique setting for this presentation, this conference. Um, this is really an honor to be able to have this platform to share information about our program and the, the wonderful art and discovery that the kids I work with have created. The, uh, I want to start out, Eric, do we have, uh, have my presentation up or my slides prepared? Yeah, you're the next slide. Okay, I'm the next slide. So if we want to go to the next slide, or I can go to the next slide here. I will do so. Sorry for the pause here. There we go. Thanks, Eric. And do I have control of the uh, of the screen now? You know. You should. I gave you control through the Zoom app. Okay. A moment to see if that works. To advance. Try one more time to see if I can get control of the screen. There you go. There we go. Thank you. Um, to get us all kind of on the same page in this unique environment where usually when I'm presenting as an educator and someone who works with groups, I, I thrive off interaction with other people. So I've got a couple of polls here and Feel free to submit questions as I'm going along. So that'll help with some of the audience interaction and kind of help, help drive where we're going. But to get us all on kind of the same page to begin this, or in the same sentiment to begin, I want to share this poem by one of my favorite authors and poets, uh, Wendell Berry. 
And this is a poem that during this unique spring and these challenging times that we've had, I had often read and reflected on uh, just to find some solace and peace and also to uh, connect around me. And I chose to share this also because it's similar to what we're trying to achieve with the kids that we work with here in Mark Rose Passage. So this is the piece of Wild Things by Wendell Berry. When despair grows in me and I wake in the night at the least sound, in fear of my children's lives may be, I fly down where the wood drake rests in his beauty and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water, and I feel above me the day blind stars waiting for their light. For a time, I rest in the grace of the world and am free. But those words brought me some peace this spring when we were going through these challenging times and continue to face these challenging times for, for our country and our loved ones and friends. Um, and also the sentiment that Wendell Berry has there is, is, is on par, as you'll realize in some of the words that I share from our students, uh, with, what, with what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to bring kids who are experiencing the, uh, the forethought of grief, as uh, Wendell Berry puts it, or anxiety, or depression, or challenges, or other mental health challenges. We're trying to bring the grace of the world, or the peace, or the freeness that Wendell Berry describes to them through contact with nature. I hope that is a familiar poem for some of you, and if not, I hope it becomes one. Um, Linda, thanks for the introduction. I'll introduce myself just a little more, I guess. Uh, I am the uh, Experiential Program Coordinator at Northwest Passage. It's a fun title, and this time of year, that this role provides me the opportunity to be in the water and on the water a lot. My week so far is included underwater photography with kids, canoeing with kids, uh, natural history education outdoors with kids, and it's really really a wonderful position that I get to have. I feel very privileged and fortunate to have that. Um, as Linda mentioned, I did grow up in North Wisconsin, Northeast Wisconsin, uh, Oneida and Vilas County to be specific. And I was very, had the gift of being uh, near water throughout my entire upbringing. And growing up in Oneida and Vilas County, you take for granted that all lakes are crystal clear with sand bottoms and full of fish and functioning ecosystems. As I traveled around the country and the world, I've realized that that's not always the case. Um, but it is those pristine uh, lakes that we have here in Northern Wisconsin that make the program that we do possible. I'm a graduate of Northern Education there. Uh, I've traveled around doing adventure guiding and outdoor education throughout Lake Superior and the Boundary Waters, Western Norway, um, and then landed back here in Northwest Wisconsin about 10 years ago and have been with Northwest Passage sharing the outdoors with kids for nine years. I'm the father of two boys, love to ski, canoe and kayak, swim, and recently discovered I love building tree houses, at least uh, the one I'm building currently for my two boys. Um, I have a poll that I'd like to know, now that I've introduced myself, I would like to know who I'm talking with. So if I can manage to pull up my poll, which on my options. Eric, do you have access to the poll that I had by chance? Ian, I don't. I'm going to have to load those real quick. So okay. please go ahead to the next slide and I'll get those going. I'll do that. Um, while Eric gets those going, I will talk a little bit about Northwest Passage. We'll further um, as Linda said, I'm going to give some background on Northwest Passage, the organization that uh, I work for and, uh, and that hosts this, or that is the home, I should say, to Under the Surface, our underwater photography program. Advanced slide here. Oh. Okay, there we go. <laughs> That's not going to work. It's not going to work. I'll keep my hands off sorry. the keyboard for a moment. Um, Northwest Passage started in 1978, 42nd year of existing as a program. Uh, it was started by two folks who were finishing their, uh, their internships for their psychology degrees and working in a youth mental health or in a uh, mental health facility in Twin Cities. And they realized that as they looked around that urban setting in a, in a mental health hospital that 
really being in the city might just not be the way that kids facing mental health challenges get better. Um, so they struck out on their, on their own and created a program uh, about a mile from where I'm sitting right now along the river, a tributary of St. Croix, and began a program with the intention of getting kids in contact, closer immediate contact with nature and wilderness, and specifically water. Um, the program has grown with the times. An evolution, and one of the wonderful things about the program is that though it has these uh, roots in, uh, in this kind of homespun program, it's developed and grown to an organization now that has over 180 employees, including myself and uh, uh, pediatric neuropsychologists, nurses, physicians, um, therapists, teachers, uh, and a full spectrum of care for kids. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a, it's a nonprofit uh, residential youth mental health treatment center. So residential means that when kids come to our program, we provide uh, everything for them, including their education. They live in our program. They stay on one of our two campuses. We have one that, uh, um, that is in Frederick, Wisconsin, and one that is here in Webster, Wisconsin. We have an assessment program where kids can come and kids come to our program for a month at a time and are evaluated um, and, and are given mental health kind of treatment plans that they can re -home, return home to for either outpatient care or further uh, inpatient residential treatment. Um, but again, the goal of, the pro of Northwest Passage when it was founded 42 years ago was, was getting kids in closer contact with nature. Um, I'm just seeing some questions pop up and I really appreciate these questions. Um, Sophia, I will touch base on that in just a few moments. Uh, just scrolling through a couple of photos here of, uh, of some of the kids we work with. This is a great photo project with one of our artists in residence that worked with us last year. He double exposed, double exposure photography of kids' portraits and landscapes in the uh, Riverway in the background. Um, and this, this demonstrates one of the goals that we have is, is, is helping kids fully integrate and be in contact with nature. As I speak right now, we have kids heading out to uh, the Florida section in Amacog and as an arts project today. Um, so being involved with the water is, is really part and parcel of what we do. Um, looking, so I've got some chat questions here. So um, sounds like- We can do a B plan on the poll. Yeah. Uh, if folks click on, on their menu, you should have a, a little thing that says, participants and it looks like a couple of people uh, and probably the number 119 next to it. When you click on that, you actually get to see everybody who's in our session right now. And there's cool. also a little option there to click yes or no. So if Ian asks a yes or no question, you'll be able to just indicate your response by, by clicking on the yes or no. And that'll give him a, a sense of um, who he's talking to without having everybody unmute themselves and, and give their response. <laughs> Which could get chaotic, I imagine. Um, is anyone in the audience, we'll try this out, is anyone listening an educator? So Ian, you should see some totals at the bottom of the participant list. Yeah, there we go. Uh, like right now Excellent. we have 12 yeses and 13 yeses and 20 noes. Awesome. Is anyone a mental health professional in the group? Or a social or work in the social work field. Did I I a couple of yeses. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Um, well, Northwest Passage operates from a principle of uh, kids do well when they can. Um, the idea here is um, that when Ian, I stopped your video just to clear, to get your uh, audio to come through a little clearer. Okay. Um, how do I sound right now, Eric? We'll see how it goes, but you were a little glitchy, so we just wanted to see if we could reduce the bandwidth on your end okay. by turning the video off. Okay. Oh, so I'm just audio now. Your audio and your slides. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. So everyone can still hear me now, I hope. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Um, so operate from a principle of kids do well when they can. 
And uh, the, the idea that, uh, that when kids, kids can be successful if given the resource, success is a matter of a child having access to the resource they need to be successful, uh, but providing the proper supports, educators, mentors, and counselors can unlock hidden potential. That's really what we aim at because when kids arrive at Northwest Passage, they're coming here because they've had, they've faced difficulties either in their home setting, uh, their school setting, or their, their community. And we're trying to address the underlying mental health needs that are resulting in behavioral challenges for them. Um, some educators in the field or other folks might be familiar with this uh, analogy of the iceberg. That when we see a child in the class or in an environmental setting, uh, learning environment, what we see from a behavioral perspective is just the tip of the iceberg emerging above, above the water. And really, um, it's important to consider everything that's beneath the water there, beneath that surface of the iceberg. And these are the challenges that kids may be facing um, that really come down to the basic Maslow's hierarchy of needs concepts of physiological and physical and emotional safety, sense of love and belonging, esteem, and ultimately self-actualization. And um, if kids aren't getting the things lower down in that pyramid, it's going to result in, in, uh, in some behavioral challenges for everyone, um, for them in these environments. So we try to meet those needs uh, through different means. And just a little more background here on, on, some, on this, the kids that we work with at Northwest Passage. Uh, here's this, this uh, study called ACEs. It's Adverse Childhood Experiences. And this includes anything from childhood trauma um, or challenges at home. By challenge, I mean significant challenges, including anything from as, as commonplace as growing up in a divorced family to as extreme as abuse or neglect or drug addiction in the home. And this is a way of evaluating uh, risk factors, essentially, for young people and how they might ultimately result in mental or physical health challenges later in life. Um, on average, the US population uh, 13% of the U.S. population scores a four or higher on this. And the reason that number is important is that a four or higher can result in long-term uh, physical or mental health challenges. Now, the kids that we work with at Northwest Passage, um, a much higher incident of, of adverse childhood experiences. We're looking for like a 59% um, of kids scoring a four or higher. So the kids we work with also often come from challenging traumatic backgrounds. And one of the things that we do to help them manage that is coach them through and provide guidance for a therapeutic lifestyle. And therapeutic lifestyle um, includes things like exercise, time spent in nature, icons should be popping up here, uh, good nutrition, uh, recreation, uh, building meaningful relationships, uh, proper relaxation and reflection, mindfulness, uh, service to others, and that could be uh, other people, other entities, um, and having some sort of spiritual intention or meaning in their lives. And, and when we put all these things together, we call this the passageway, the fun plan of words. Um, it's also a, uh, a critical aspect to this therapy of lifestyle and an important part of kids' treatment. It's, uh, it's kind of one leg of the three-legged stool at Northwest Passage provides is this therapeutic lifestyle, psychiatry, and therapy. Um, we base that concept on research. Uh, we don't take our programming decisions lightly. We, we base everything we do in good science, as, as we all should. Um, so the paper that we, or research that we primarily base that concept on is one called Lifestyle and Mental Health. It was published about 10 years ago. The neat thing was that when this paper came out, it coincided with what Northwest Passage had been, done, been doing for 30 years previous. We just finally had science to support what we intuitively felt was, was right for kids. Uh, this picture is Dr. Roger Walsh, who wrote the paper, and on the left, we may recognize that kind gentleman as well. Um, so solid, solid research informs the decisions that we make here at Northwest Passage um, and how we develop programming for the kids we work with. Try to go back, skip ahead one too many slides. Like, there we go. Another, another bit of research that informs us or overlaps with what, with what we do is, is this book that was published about 12 years ago now by an author and researcher and journalist named uh, Richard Liu. 
And in this book, and if it's one you've read, wonderful. If it's one you haven't read, I highly encourage you to read it. Um, and he's talking about the disconnect between children and adults, for that matter, um, for spending time in nature. And he coined this term nature deficit disorder. Uh, any mental health professionals in the audience right now will know that that's not an actual diagnosis. I want to make that very clear. It's not an actual diagnosis, but it's a term that he used to characterize three different uh, markers that were seen, often seen in kids that were lacking adequate time spent in nature, and they're marked by depression, attention deficit, and anxiety. When we look at those three factors amongst the general population, uh, uh, in this graph, the blue is the general population, the orange is of kids that we work with here at Northwest Passage, we saw high incidence of uh, attention deficit challenges, uh, depression, and generalized anxiety. Uh, much higher than the average population. So once again, confirming that spending time in nature may indeed be a very valuable aspect of what you need. And then about, uh, I think it was about eight years ago or 10 years ago, it was soon after uh, Last Child in the Woods came out, um, a marine biologist and researcher named Wallace Nichols uh, published this book, this uh, Blue Mind. And it's a, it's a compendium, a collection of research, um, and taking a very close look at how valuable water is uh, to our well being, our mental and physical well being. And when we're in, on, under, or near water, that we end up being happier, healthier, and, uh, and more, more efficient and effective at what we do. I think those, of, those in this audience here and the folks that work around water or live on water can attest to this. So it's about this time, um, 2014, we're looking at these things and we had been about four years into a successful um, under or a successful above water photography program, looking at using photography as a vehicle for connecting kids to nature in a uh, non-confrontational way. You know, some programs use, use an approach of uh, backpacking long trips or deep, uh, you know, intense adventures in the backcountry to, uh, to get kids in contact with nature as a therapeutic, uh, as a therapeutic tool. We discovered that photography was a, a much more effective and, uh, and contemplative and mindful way to uh, get kids in contact with nature. So we've been doing that for about five years in close partnership with the National Park Service. We took trips around the country uh, to Yellowstone, uh, Badlands, some of, the, some of the other western mountains. Uh, Isle Royale, some other uh, Midwestern parks, and then integrated that as a regular aspect of what we do in our program to get kids in contact with nature in our immediate backyard in the St. Croix National Scenic Riverway, Ice Age Trail, uh, public lands around us in our area here. And it was about that time that we got, um, got a phone call out of the blue from a gentleman who's in the background of this picture. I don't know if my mouse moves on people's images, but this gentleman right here, uh, Dr. Tobin LaFrancois, a freshwater ecologist. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if some of the audience are a colleague or work with Tobin. Um, but Tobin reached out and as a research diver and, and freshwater ecologist, he, he wanted to uh, be part of something where he saw impact from what the research he was doing. He wanted to blend his experience underwater with our experience working with kids in photography. And out of that collaboration um, came Forgot this wonderful slide. How could I remember this wonderful slide? We also looked at the fact that Wisconsin is a is a blue mind state. We look at all our water. We're rich with water, um, and and have access to this this wonderfully clean water that would make a program like this possible. So through this collaboration, looking at our resources, born out of that that brainstorm and, and development, came our uh, in a new light under the surface project where we began taking kids, outfitting them with the proper equipment, the proper safety, to get them in the water and diving. Um, I'm just trying to move my mouse here, pardon me for a second. Okay. I have, I can see my screen here. Oops. Eric, I had a link to a video here, but I'm not seeing it right now. Um, but I'm going to be able to get to it. Can you 
a second. Here we go. So um, we began this program, and I'll, I'll play. We'll play this short video to give an introduction to what that. To give a taste of it. We'll see how it leads through. Anyone else getting any audio on this? Uh, no, we're not in. There, there should be audio. Okay. Um, Let me pause and, and uh, get it going here. Sorry about that. Okay. I'd be happy to field a couple of questions. Well, if that's Linda, are you able to view questions while we're waiting? I'd be happy to answer a couple of questions. At this time, I have no questions. Okay. I, I open the floor to questions if anybody has any. <laughs> pass, to pass the moment. Oh, there we go. Can you indicate if there's audio? You should hear a loon. Music. It makes me feel like I am in a different world and that I'm just untouchable for the time being. I feel relaxed and spiritually with the world and my surroundings. Like, it'll make you just stop what you're thinking about and think about other things. It's peaceful. I don't have to worry about anything. All I gotta worry about is just what's under there. I don't have to worry about any problems I'm having. Just very mindful. What I'm doing here. Just the environment around you is a whole different world. You gotta pay attention so you don't miss anything. I also feel that there is another power that is stronger than me, and that's Mother Nature. I would say when I'm in the water, I feel very calm. You're very focused, I would say. It makes you feel calm and relaxed. When I'm like swimming, like in the water, just relaxing, and looking at all the fish swimming around. I don't know, it's just hard to explain. I don't like being underwater. I love being underwater. My favorite part about the underwater photography would have to be the muscles. I love the muscles. There can be about a thousand bugs around you like at all times. It's just super cool. I think favorite things would be the animals. I just think getting away from everything and then like you're just worrying about getting the pictures and getting good shots and seeing everything that's under there. Like, it's just, you don't have to worry about anything else. Everything else can be put aside for the moment. And you can just focus on what's under the water. It's like you're just floating around in space, completely relaxed. Just not worrying about anything, just worrying about yourself. If you are, you know, focused, you're trying to find the stuff you're you're curious like a cat when i'm doing the nature photography i am focused on the pictures but it's not the same i don't know why but it's just i think there, it's just there's more to take in underwater because no one ever sees that i've never seen it underwater it's just it's cool it's a whole <laughs> other nature photography in my opinion it's very simple whereas Underwater photography, it can range from simple, like the weeds in the water, 
to very difficult, like the fish and the turtle, because they don't, you know, just stay there. That's the fun thing about underwater photography, and that would make me enjoy it a lot more. There's more stuff to explore that hasn't been explored before. It's all been studied, like they know what the species are, but they, they haven't like seen that one spot no one else has. Or they haven't seen that one spot and it changes all the time, so like even if someone did, they still didn't see the same thing I just seen. It's just relaxing, I don't know, it's just it's real interesting to me. I just forget. I just forget about everything. Like if I'm mad and I go on the trip, I'll come back and I'll be fine. It, it helps. It's definitely therapeutic. So uh, I love that video because the kids' voices can always say it better, far better than anyone else can. But we made that video in the first year that we uh, that we ran the program, um, and immediately expanded the following year to uh, both of our programs, both our residential programs. So we run two two groups uh, each summer, uh, diving in the lakes, capturing photos, uh, crossing their photos, and sharing them out. Um, uh, this particular photo is on Lake 26. I want to be some folks in the audience here. Um, let's see if I can get to my slide here. There's a number of factors that make this program, you know, really work. Um, those are, of course, you know, strong leadership and guidance, and building trust and safety among the group. We often work with with kids who have uh, never swam who are uncomfortable in water and we build up their competencies and abilities and confidence to be able to be in the water and not just be in the water but also uh, experience the, the, the calming factors, the therapeutic factors, uh, as Anthony put it, that, uh, oh, excellent, Bruce, glad to see you want to take up snorkeling based on this, <laughs> um, that, uh, that the water provides. I'm trying to advance my slide here. Take a second. There we go. Um, that last photo is Lake 26. I wouldn't be surprised if folks can guess what this lake is. This is off Sand Island on, uh, on Lake Superior um, in the Apostle Islands, one of my closest, places closest to my heart in my life. Um, uh, Again, so on the right, there is uh, Dr. Tobin LaFrancois, um, a colleague and partner in, in coordinating and leading this program. And this is one of our Prairie View um, girls groups on, a, uh, on one of our capstone trips from our trip a couple of years ago, where we camped out on Sand Island and dove the, the uh, sea caves out there um, with the help of one of the audience members. As a matter of fact, I saw someone's name in there who will show up in a later photo. Um, and so we've, we were given the, uh, the opportunity to explore a number of different locations. I'm gonna address a question that just came up because it's, it's valuable. Um, from Ashland County Land and County Water, well, LCWD. Um, the ages of kids that we work with uh, in our treatment programs are 12 to 17. 
in our assessment program, we work with kids as young as six, um, but we don't work with kids younger than 12 in our residential programs. Um, so here we have a shot uh, on the upper Namakagan, right below Namakagan Lake, uh, or Namakagan Dam, and then right below Gordon Dam is the photo on the right-hand side. Um, I love that photo on the left. You can just see the joy um, that, that Matt is finding there in the water. We work with Little Lakes. This is, uh, this is one of our lo local lakes here in Central Polk County or uh, North Central Polk County. Um, and for these lakes that are often overlooked and we just see what's on the surface and it's, there, there is obvious intention in the name of the program. We get below the surface and find what's under the surface in the lakes. Um, the, uh, we discover everything is, that's, everything is down there. This lake is just full of sunfish um, and, and lilies and all sorts of hidden, hidden gems that uh, they're often not seen. Advancing a slide. Um, and again, joy. When we look back in the context of the kids we work with, we talk about the adverse child experiences um, and the, the challenging backgrounds that kids come from to see this level of joy um, and being in the water is truly gratifying. And it opens up the opportunity for kids' minds to expand from, from a uh, anxious or uh, protected place into being creative and, uh, and collaborative. Um, this is diving on uh, Loon Creek, uh, which is a tributary to the Yellow River, which in turn is a tributary to the St. Croix. Ian, we have a question here about how do you encourage the practices to continue as residents end their residency and, and leave your program? Oh, it's a wonderful question. Um, thank you, Sophia, for that. Um, Linda, thanks for passing that question along. Um, so one of the wonderful things, you know, I referenced that, that, that concept of the passageway earlier on um, in the introduction. And the idea there is that when kids leave our program, we don't always know. We, we, we've, we do aftercare um, for a set amount of time, but we hope that kids will, of course, continue therapeutic services. But those are dependent on outside resources. So the idea with coaching kids in a therapeutic lifestyle is that when they, when they learn these therapeutic lifestyle skills, those are things they own and they can integrate into their lives. Now, they may not always have access to a supportive dive team that can take them uh, out in the water, but we do provide, uh, we do connect kids with local resources whenever possible. And we do have a, uh, a separate foundation um, that's all based on donations and support called the Passage Foundation, that where we provide alumni awards, where we um, continue to stay connected with kids and provide them with with cameras, resources, as they can apply, as though they're applying for a grant on their own. Um, and we can provide them with tools and resources, and that may be a camera, that may be a membership to some sort of organization, it may be lessons, maybe school lessons, it might be whatever they see, what, whatever they identify in their community can be a resource or a tool for them to continue their therapeutic lifestyle. Um, one of the other things that's the last couple of years, and this is through a connection with the National Park Service's Submerged Resources Center, um, which has uh, is, is been an amazing gift for us, an amazing connection, is that we stay connected with graduates of the program. And after they've turned 18, they can apply to be part of a graduate alumni trip, uh, completely supported by the Submerged Resources Center. Um, we've done this four years now. Uh, we're going to take them to Dry Tortugas National Park as a, as a I, I would say, somewhat reunion, but an alumni expedition. Um, and we do underwater photography at, uh, at Dry Tortugas National Park. And that's a way to remain connected, for them to remain connected to this community they built within Northwest Passage and expand their connections beyond just those walls. Hopefully that answers your question. I'm going to minimize this here so I can see. Um, this is a quote from one of our graduates. And this is actually a graduate who uh, did, did go on that uh, director to his expedition. The first time I went underwater, the water created a type of, uh, oh, thank you, Jason. Um, first time I went underwater, the water created a type of presence, type of mindfulness I had never felt before. This is a sentiment that I've heard from a number of, of 
kids when they get in the water. Um, sometimes the uh, literal and figurative noise of the world can be overwhelming. And when we put our faces in the water, we have on a mask and snorkel, quiet, it calms that external noise of the world and it allows for focus. And as Sadaf, this graduate puts it, um, it forces mindfulness in the most positive and, and calming way imaginable. I had another short video, but I'm watching my time here. So we might pass by that video and see if we can visit at the end. Um, I want to move forward through here. Shot of Lake Superior there at the Herbster Wisconsin Beach. We were camped out with a group there on one of our cast on trips. Um, so there's a number of things that make this program work. Um, I say prime, the primary, there's two primary factors that make it work. One is the, found, the therapeutic foundation um, that's created by Northwest Passage's uh, therapeutic program. Uh, our, our core backbone of dialectical behavioral therapy, our amazing team of uh, direct care counselors and therapists and educators create a foundation where kids who had been disrupted or facing significant challenges in their home settings can find a level of uh, comfort and confidence to do something that, they, that very few people do, <laughs> which is underwater photography. Um, so that foundation is created by, by Northwest Passage's core programming. Um, and the second critical factor is clear, clean, accessible waterways with functioning ecosystems. And really a, a, a tip of the hat and, and, and endless gratitude to organizations like um, all of your associations, all the partner associations here that make that possible. Um, I was in Southern Illinois for a conference earlier this spring at a nature center down there. And, uh, and I asked the folks there, how's your water quality at this lake? So it looked like a beautiful limestone lake. It's like, oh, it's fantastic. It's some of the best in the state. And so I, I walked down to check out the water and I couldn't see a foot and a half into the water. And it, it dawned on me how, how fortunate we are where we are to have, accessible, to have, have access to what we do. Um, this is one of our, our, our beach talks before our dive. Um, Gordon Dam on St. Croix. Uh, and and what we're, what's demonstrated in this, in this shot right here is this idea of guidance and leadership, you know, building trust and safety and the concept of a just culture within our group. This is an opportunity for everyone, whether you're a, a group leader, a, an adult staff member, um, or a, a resident, a, a kid in the program, to voice any concerns for safety, emotional, physical safety, before we hit the water. Um, so this is, this is our group beach talk before heading out. Um, so that concept of, of trust and safety, just culture, good guidance, and also mentorship, um, being able to connect one-on-one -on -one with kids who may not have had positive one-on-one -on -one leadership and connection in the past, um, and being able to give that positive and constructive feedback when working, coaching kids through uh, their photography, their art, the ecology. I think in this picture, I was, I was talking with Drew here about uh, freshwater mussels. Freshwater mussels become one of our favorite subjects when we're out um, working in the field uh, and photographing. Um, but that opportunity for, for kids to pick something up out of the water or look at it or point at it and say, what is this? How does it fit into the ecosystem or the ecology of this waterway? Um, and for us as educators and facilitators being nimble enough to, uh, to, to discuss that. Um, and it certainly helps to have a uh, PhD freshwater ecologist as, as my colleague. Um, my, my, my biology degree doesn't always cover all the basics, but uh, we, well, we can answer questions. And then of course the, the positive feedback and the connection with community partners and, and leaders and uh, National Park Service um, leadership. This was on a capstone trip. Um, uh, Julie Van Staffen from the National Park Service uh, was guiding our boat, was taking us around the lake there. Um, and uh, we we're camping out on, on Sand Islands, just an absolutely wonderful, uh, wonderful uh, and memorable capstone of that year's underwater photography. But getting that direct feedback for the art and the discovery the kids are doing uh, goes a long way in building a young person's confidence. Um, and belief in themselves that they're capable of more than they may have thought previously. 
sorry for the pause. I'm trying to advance the slide here. This is on Sand Island um, in the Apostles. And then ultimately, the kids create um, become jumping off points for reflection and, uh, and introspection and an opportunity to share. So the idea is that photography catches our eye and then we can actually begin to listen to the words that the kids have to say. So this is uh, the poem by one of our graduates uh, entitled Home is Where the Heart Is. This was actually published in the Agate magazine a couple years ago. Um, Submerged within the planet's wonders, I allow myself to be carried downstream by the river's own volition. Feeling this new feeling that I've never felt before, I'm tempted to do something that I've never done before. As second nature is breathing, I allow myself to ease into my surroundings. I open up my chest and let the fist-sized mound of red fall out from my ribcage. I watch it sink down and land peacefully with a soft thump on the riverbed. Despite the little voice in my, the voice of hesitance in my mind, I swim away with a new kind of confidence. I leave my heart here in the river so that I will feel forever compelled to return back home. And that reflection, uh, frankly, gives me goosebumps whenever I read it. Um, uh, what, you know, what we can read there is, is the fact that uh, the, the water, the rivers, the lakes are, are helping to take care of the kids, helping to take care of kids' emotional needs um, in a way that we never anticipated when we began this program. It's just been something that's naturally developed. Um, and kids are learning to love the water that's taking care of them. And in turn, they look closely and they find little details. Um, I'm going to welcome input from any of our fish biologists that might be in the audience to uh, shoot out uh, comments and chats to everyone on identification of these next two slides. Uh, no judgment if anybody gets it wrong. This is a Sculpin to the best of my, my identif identifying abilities. Uh, um, but it's amazing what kids find when they begin looking closely in the water. This one I haven't identified, so if anybody uh, has a comment, and model Sculpin. Thank you, Dave. Uh, that was our last slide, I assume? Or is that this one? Last, got it. Does anyone know what we're looking at here? Johnny Darter, thank you, Eric. Outstanding. But these are little things, these are just little small wonders that are beneath the surface there that um, the, uh, the closer we look and these kids find patience within themselves to look closely enough to not only see, but also see and wait and observe and capture these images. These are kids that if you remember back from my introduction that the three kind of uh, noteworthy factors of this uh, nature deficit sort of concept, one of the three was attention deficit. Um, and to find that patience in a student who often can't sit in a classroom for more than five minutes and remain focused on, on the curriculum, to sit for 15, 20 minutes calmly, quietly breathing in the water to capture this um, speaks to the power of water and what it can do uh, for kids in need. And they create art. Well, they may create art, but as this graduate, I quoted her saying, uh, people will say that the residents of Northwest Passage have gone under the surface and created art from what they see. The truth is we don't really create art from what we see. We just document the art that is already there. The water gives us the art, it has always given us the art for thousands of years. And that sort of insight is, uh, um, it's, go, again, goes beyond what we ever anticipated when we began this program. Um, let's see, ECLC staff, how long, um, I just saw that one pop up, let me pull that back up. How long do residents typically stay in your program? Excellent question. Um, a typical stay in our program is uh, anywhere from six months to nine months, um, seldom shorter than six months. Uh, each, each stay, it's an open enrollment program, so kids come and go on an individualized schedule depending on their need. And they, they remain in the program until they meet their goals, until the treatment goals are met and we can be confident that we're moving them along to, a, um, to an environment that we're setting them up, them up for success. Uh, part, of, part of what we 
plan for with a, with a residence graduation includes uh, family therapy, um, depending on what their family setting is, whether it's their, their biological family or foster family or a, uh, um, the uh, um, so on. Um, and we, we coach their next home setting in um, in uh, in the skills that the, their child is learning. So when that child returns back home, they're they're in an environment that will hopefully have similar skills to what they've learned. Sorry, that was a bit of a rambling response to your question. I hope that helped, though. Um, and to focus on uh, what what the, sort of the sentiment of this reflection here is: that the heart is in the water, and uh, and when, when kids discover and they look closely and they find what's there, they have the opportunity to share that art in a way that other people haven't seen before. Um, and create a view from their own perspective. Um, I think probably everybody in this audience has seen, a, has seen this plant before, has seen water lily before, but not everyone's seen it from this angle. Um, and one more question there I'm gonna add. Do we do land-based land project also? Yes. Thank you. Uh, um, I'm not, I don't know how to pronounce your name or what your acronym is, but thank you for that question. Yes, we do uh, land-based projects year-round. We do, we do terrestrial photography as a fixed element of our programming uh, year-round, uh, and kids are getting out every, every uh, multiple trips every week in our surrounding areas for land-based photography, including frigid winter days. Um, of course, not when it's too frigid. Um, there's a Norwegian saying that there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothing, but that does no limitations in Wisconsin. But we get out even in the, even in the snow in the wintertime for photography. Um, uh, Sophia, yeah, what were some of the challenges that came up in starting the program? Um, you know, when you, when you begin a program that's never been done before, to my knowledge, and I've looked, there is no other youth under, therapeutic youth underwater photography program in the world. To my knowledge, this is the only one that exists. So when you're when you're creating new ground, creating new programs, uh, it takes a collaboration of resources and knowledge. Um, one of our founding partners, uh, um, Ben Thwaites, myself, uh, Tobin Francois, we all came in with different aspects of knowledge of my background from adventure guiding and uh, and knowing the waters in northern Wisconsin. Ben's ability with uh, knowledge photography and Tobin's knowledge of freshwater ecology, we combine these resources. Um, so a lot of the challenge is knowing how we want to set this up and what we want from it. Um, and then adapting, being willing to adapt and, uh, and each year review what works and, and move forward um, to benefit from that. Um, I will say that it's a, it's a resource intensive program. Um, so we need a lot of materials. It's an expensive program to run. We spend a lot of time writing grants, and um, we are a nonprofit. So this aspect of what we do falls outside the normal realm of um, traditional therapy, traditional therapy and treatments. Everything we do is supported by grants and donations uh, with our underwater photography, photography programs. So again, the art is there. Uh, it's just documented. So I threw this slide in, a nod to Ansel Adams, um, who his photography was critical drawing attention to the beauty that exists in, in our nation. Um, at the time of the creation and expansion of our national park system, Ansel Adams brought his photos to Congress, held up large examples of the art and beauty that many people sitting in that room had never seen before, his photos of Yosemite and other Western parks. Um, were critical in the protection of the protect, creation, expansion, and protection of those landscapes and, and as parks. Um, and I love this quote that not everybody trusts paintings, but people believe photographs. Um, so we encourage kids that, that what they're doing uh, creates an opportunity to show the world what's there. And if we're aware, of what's there. We may want to make some efforts to protect what's there. For example, this freshwater sponge, um, and I'm going to quote uh, Jonathan here, uh, the photographer who took this photo. He said, uh, 
Um, there are so many beautiful aspects of life that we never see and we never know about it unless we look. Sometimes we have to look in the places that are dark and scary and unfamiliar to find the greatest beauty of all. Take the sponge, for example. I was really surprised to find out that there were sponges in freshwater ecosystems. Now I've had an opportunity to capture their beauty to share with the world. So it's similar to how Ansel Adams brought, I brought those iconic images and awareness to our national parks. Is our program can bring awareness to, um, to the amazing worlds that exist beneath the surface of the lakes and rivers right here in Northwest Wisconsin. Um, another quote from, from Rachel, one of our program graduates is, uh, being underwater has reformed me. I don't feel afraid of the world I've never seen or touched. All I feel is the drive to show others what I've seen here. It's a desire to provide that service of showing the world their perspective and what they see under the surface, under the water, um, brings value and meaning to the work that they're doing. I absolutely love this photo of uh, fish, fish folks, correct if I'm wrong, really that's a uh, sucker and a brook trout. Um, this is on the Brule River. And I love the two, these two very different species and one often, often idolized and one usually uh, look down upon just swimming right next to each other in the exact same current. Just looking through. This is a uh, snapping turtle that uh, this image was captured. This is a large snapping turtle. Um, this was on Lake Owen. I know the Lake Owen Lake Association is uh, one of the partners in, in, this, uh, in this conference. So I hope some of you are seeing this and maybe you're familiar with this turtle. I don't know. Um, but the boldness that it took to hang out and stay in the water and capture that image uh, um, for young people who luckily had never seen, many of whom had never seen a snapping turtle in, in the water before. So um, it builds confidence, it builds ability. Um, it's truly really amazing. Um, you have referenced our connection with the National Park Service uh, and, and the support they've provided for us to make this program possible. We're diving here. Um, again, I'm looking at the caves in the background, the Sand Island Caves. Um, off, off one of the Park Service boats. Um, I'm going to bring this back around here to uh, this sentiment um, by a young woman named Jade. She was one of our program graduates, but uh, I'm just going to read her words here. Into the water I went, washing away the pain the scars left, away from my thoughts, away from me, submerged in the pace, peaceful currents. I let myself go for just a moment. As I rose up out of the water, the sun seemed to shine brighter. I knew I was going to be okay. This reflection from Jade um, resonated again with me uh, in a similar way to Wendell Berry's. What, what she's describing here um, is, is, is emotional uh, and anxiety and challenges from, from the, the challenges she's individually facing, but the solace and peace and comfort that she found in water. I thought that her words mirrored very closely Wendell Berry's words. Um, so dis discovering that similar, that similar feeling that nature and specifically water can provide uh, for a person uh, in a world where things are often challenging um, and overwhelming, that water can provide the peace and the solace that, that we all seek to And this quote from one, of, of course, is people who spend time in water, Jacques Cousteau, one of our heroes, uh, is that people protect what they love. So, so up to this point, I've been describing this interaction of kids with the water and the water uh, taking care of the kids, so to speak. So water is providing uh, the opportunity for kids to find the peace and solace that Jay reflected in those previous words. And, and in turn, kids developing that love for the water. So our primary goal in the program is a therapeutic one for kids. But to be frank, one of our secondary goals is for kids to, in the long run, build that emotional connection to the, to the landscape, to the waterscape, as it were. And ultimately, in the long term, term, after the water is taken care of them, that hopefully they will take care of the water. And we know the impact that we can have, that we can have when people protect what they love. Uh, this map 
probably many of you recognize this is a watershed map of uh, St. Croix watershed. Uh, many of the lakes that we all love fall within this watershed. Many of the lakes and riverways and streams that we run our program on exist within this, this watershed. And we know that when people love a watershed, they can act to protect it. So 52 years ago, if my master heard me right, uh, the St. Croix National Scenic River was established as a wild and scenic river. And because of that, we see the difference in these two waterways where they meet in Prescott, Wisconsin, the St. Croix watershed and the Mississippi watershed and the impact that caring for a landscape can have, caring for water and watershed can have. So in the long term, in the short term, we're providing therapeutic benefit the lakes and waterways that you all are protecting um, through your efforts and information shared in this conference, you're protecting waterways that can create a therapeutic opportunity for the kids that we work with here. In the long run, we hope that those kids will return the favor to the water and help to protect it for future generations. And ultimately, they can be part of that solution in their faces, these kids, and maybe join these familiar faces, Rachel Carson, and Ansel Adams, and Gaylord Nelson, and all the Leopold as conservation partners and supporters for future generations. We want to end on this slide and this quote um, from one of our program graduates. People are taught the same few things. Don't let anyone push you around. Stay firm in your beliefs. Don't tolerate intolerance. Rather, stand up against it. Doing this will help you be confident but as I float here in this seemingly endless abyss of blue, I settle on one thing. These waves can toss me about wherever they so please. Being here can change any opinion I might have had. I will tolerate this lake's intolerance peacefully, confidently, and joyfully. I will never fight against the chaos. I will do this all without a single complaint. Because I am forever indebted to this great lake. After all, this lake saved my life. So never underestimate the work that you all are doing to create and maintain and conserve the resource of water in Northwest Wisconsin. It can bring value far beyond what we can ever imagine for young people and future generations. I'm happy to answer questions if anyone has anything to share or, or, um, or ask at this time. Uh, and if not, thank you very much for the opportunity and uh, have an excellent conference. Ian, thank you so very, very much for sharing. And please take our thanks and uh, appreciation to the students that you work with, your students for sharing parts, parts of themselves, which I think is really important. Thank you very much. I will absolutely pass that on. And, and, uh, and thank you for providing a platform for, their, for them to, for their words and, and, uh, and uh, and sentiment and art to be shared. Well, we, re we definitely appreciate it. So um, at this time, if you can advance, I think at the end of your presentation, there is a, a slide there. Oh, I think um, Eric might have just done it. Okay. And so um, again, thank you, thank you, thank you. And for those of you listening um, and watching, um, remember you can um, go to the reaction button if you happen to have it on your device. Um, and uh, give a big round of applause to, to Ian and what he has shared with us today. So thank you very much, Ian. Thank you all for the opportunity. And uh, I look forward to, uh, to the rest of the conference. I do have a question in the chat for you, Ian. It's a timely yeah. one, I guess. It's, it's something you and I have discussed. Uh, currently, there is this pandemic happening. And the question is, how is that affecting your programming? Um, what, what sort of changes have you guys had to main, make in the last few months? And I guess maybe also reflect on how the kids are handling all this. Excellent question. Yeah, thank you for that. And it is, an, it is a timely and important one. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll preface my response by saying that the need for uh, youth mental health services hasn't decreased during the midst of a pandemic. Um, you could say that it's increased. Uh, so we, um, we continue to, to take intakes, to take new kids into the program. Um, we've modified to allow for, a, uh, uh, for intakes to allow uh, physical, physical distancing between a cohort of intakes so they can be monitored 
um, and make sure everybody's healthy before integrating. Uh, we've managed, uh, we, we've minimized integration between cohorts of kids within the program, um, but we continue also to, to run our program the best as possible. For about six weeks after the uh, initial onset of uh, the peak of, of onset with the pandemic, we uh, remained completely on grounds for our programs, which initially was a challenge because a big part of my role is, hey, let's get out and let's get in the landscape and get out and see what's out there. But we're really fortunate that one of our campuses, our campus here in Webster, um, is 60 acres and 10 acres of that is a peninsula on the shoreline of the Clam River. Our other campus has a 20 acre uh, prairie in the midst of restoration, which we have about a mile of trails on. So we had access to nature on both of our campuses um, and which was immediately accessible. With underwater photography, um, we stay within our cohort. We separate out in two different vans for transportation so we can distance uh, within the van and frankly, our destinations are remote enough that we interact very little, if at all, with the public and maximize social distancing and physical distancing um, there. Um, so there's a variety of ways we've adapted, but we're working under excellent leadership and guidance from our medical director, um, who looks tirelessly at CDC recommendations and, uh, and we think critically about how we're responding and, uh, and working. So Ian, there's one last question in the three minutes we have remaining. Could you just give an overview of how the whole program is funded? Absolutely, yeah, we're, we are a nonprofit. Um, so the program in general, Northwest is funded as any um, healthcare program is funded. Um, you know, we are a mental health provider, mental health care provider. So there is some, uh, some private um, uh, insurance funding for services. There's also some, some uh, county services that are provided through the counties where we work with kids from all over the country. So depending on where they're coming from, um, their, uh, their funding is coming from different areas too. However, anything that's above and beyond what's considered traditional mental health treatment, um, which includes the majority of, of where my realm is in our program, um, is funded through uh, donation and grant writing. So a big part of my job and my role is, uh, is reaching out to try to continue to receive funding to do that. And I assume there's a way, to, if we go to the Northwest Passage webpage, you guys do have a way for people to make a donation. I think also maybe, do you guys have a plan to reopen the gallery that's out in Burnett County? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I'm sitting at my desk in our office in our, new, our newly expanded gallery, as a matter of fact, it was funded through a, uh, a grant from the state um, where we feature art from our kids and art from local artists. Um, we, we have not set a date for opening. We're playing it very safely because of the interaction of our kids and the community and everyone's well-being. Um, frankly, are very eager to get kids in, get, get the public in to see the art. Um, and yes, to your point there, Eric, yes, if you go to the nwpltd.org, um, there are links to follow there for supporting our program and making donations, which we would heartily welcome. Um, and graciously welcome any support you want to uh, send our send our way in one of us. Great. Well, I, again, I want to thank you, and I'll give a little bit of uh, clues as to what happens next as far as the program goes. Um, we do have a break, a 15-minute break, scheduled until 10:30. Uh, so you're obviously welcome to go use your bathrooms and go get more coffee if you need to. Um, and then we we fire things up at 10:30 in three different streams. You got to this meeting this morning by clicking on a link on a, on a Google Doc or on a, a web page. And on that same page, you'll basically see the three options. This is one of the tracks that you're in right now. So this track will just uh, continue to resume with the, the slideshow. Um, but then if you want to go into one of the other two tracks, you're going to need to click on those other links. Um, and there'll be different meeting hosts there and some moderators to help get you situated. Uh, but once again, I want to thank Linda and I want to thank uh, Ian for this this morning's presentation. The photographs are amazing. Um, I, I just can't thank you guys enough for all you do. Uh, so we'll we'll let Ian go. He's free to join us in our other sessions, and we'll take a, a 15 minute break. And the next sessions will resume at 10:30. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all very much.